Well, first I want to get into this, man. When someone says, hey, my dog is reactive, could you help me? Like they send me a DM or something like that. It's not something you can just help somebody with over the internet. It's an extremely unrealistic expectation to get your answer with a quick sentence. That's like literally asking a mechanic how to build an engine um, because of how much knowledge that I have to have in order to really put together the right uh, recipe to help a said individual dog. Now with Togo specifically, soft temperament, insecure, possibly fearful, um, the habit's been going on for you know, only God knows how long. Mom doesn't want to take in places because she's afraid to. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Captain Chad Gabs. This is TFE TV. I appreciate you tapping in. We're going to talk a little bit about reactivity, peel back a couple of layers, talk a little bit about my current case. Um, not all dogs are created equally, man. And in some of these reactivity cases, uh, as I like to say, you know, results may vary depending on what we got. There's so It's such a nuanced... Uh, it's very nuanced and um, we're going to get into a little bit of the details and just t talk a little bit about my experience. Um, I'm going to cut to a clip right now, uh, show you like, uh, I believe it was like one of the first days that I had Togo out. He's here for hyper dog reactivity and you're going to see a little bit of that in this clip right here. So uh, before we get into it, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. If you're new here, uh, I'm just here to try to help you guys become a little bit more informed and better dog owners. Um, so anyway, I really appreciate it. It helps me out a lot if you leave a thumbs up on the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Um, but without further ado, let's cut to the clip real quick. Hey, you didn't do too bad there, buddy. You give that dog a biscuit. <laughs> uh, you. Good. Almost lunch. That a lot of the time, that type of shit will really traumatize the handler. I don't. Mess, I don't. Been doing this for so long. I know that. That was just one little experience and now he's done moved on the human usually won't move on from that the dog will the dog's gonna be able to do a better job next time just as long as i could put that shit, leave that shit at the front door and just be a little bit more tuned in and focused on the next experience does that make sense awesome glad you guys could see that a lot of dog trainers like to show you the pretty after uh, don't really you know talk a whole lot about like what goes into you know, how to get the end result or, you know, ah, there's no ending to this shit. You just keep working and you try to just manage this deal. You know, it's like some of these dogs have such a bad habit of this. It's almost like it's something that you just continue to manage and the smallest of victories uh, should be celebrated. You know, um, I've had so many reactive dogs and, and the results have always varied. And I've, um, depending on the dog, you know, I, I freaking this that and the third there's like so many like can this dog handle this much pressure can't this temperament this personality how long this dog's been doing it this dog's age this dog's breed so again there's like kind of a nuanced situation going on there but with togo specifically uh he's a real sensitive guy he can't handle a lot of pressure because he's so conflicted he's got this he's got this like auto like habit sea dog launch sea dog launch it's just a react it's like a it's like a natural reaction it's just such a bad habit at this point it takes no time at all for it to go with zero to a hundred okay so what do we got to do what, what, what have I done to combat that well first I want to get into this man when someone says hey my dog is reactive could you help me like they send me a DM or something like that it's not something you can just help somebody with over the internet it's an extremely unrealistic expectation to get your answer with a quick sentence. That's like literally asking a mechanic how to build an engine um, because of how much knowledge that I have to have in order to really put together the right uh, recipe to help a said individual dog. Now with Togo specifically, soft temperament, insecure, possibly fearful, um, 
the habit's been going on for you know, only God knows how long. Mom doesn't want to take in places because she's afraid to. But my goal with Togo, just as with all my other reactive cases, is to reprogram the way that he sees the thing. I, I, I need to reverse that. I need to modify that behavior. And, uh, you know, without getting into any, like, super fancy jargon, um, again, somebody asks me, hey, how do you fix reactivity? You don't just, you don't just, you don't just, like, address the reactivity. Because relationship is everything. Which is why when the dog is here for three weeks, the first week, we don't even leave my property. We do nothing but hang out. We start our formal obedience, we hand feed, we teach the dog how to walk like a gentleman, we start to work the obedience, we give the dog an actual, we, we have an expectation of the dog, okay? So this foundation, the reason for this foundation is because I need the dog to have something to fall back on in a more difficult situation. I could not possibly expect this dog to fall in line if I haven't set a foundation for them, they will not know what to do. Nothing to fall back on. They don't know sit, they don't know stay, their impulse control shit, because it's all crap to begin with. If I can't get a dog to comply here at the ranch with little to no stimulant or distraction, there's no way in hell I'm gonna be able to get that once we get outside. Does that make sense? So you ask me, oh yeah, like how do I fix reactivity? I would more or less be like, hey, we probably need to fix your relationship. Does your dog take you seriously when you ask them to do something? Or are they completely confused and out in left field and they do not know what to do because you just haven't sufficiently taught them anything yet? And that's the harsh reality I think a lot of dog owners really haven't you know, been willing to uh, understand or they just, nobody's ever really brought them the information like this. So if you appreciate that information and it's starting to get your wheels turning, definitely leave a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to the channel because I got a lot more where that came from. So we got to fix the relationship first. It was one of the things I was thinking the other day because, like, people, like this client, like she's like she's like you know, I want to sleep in my want him to sleep in my bed, you know. And I'm like, that's fair enough. You could let him sleep in your bed, but that's something that dogs who aren't misbehaving get to do, you know. Like that's a that's a, like an earned. You got to earn that, you know. If, if if you're sort of you know having pain points and you're having trouble with your dog's behavior. You know, them sleeping in your bed certainly wouldn't be something that I think would lean into helping the overall cause. Because again, there's a breach in the relationship and we need to get back to like neutral. We need to get back to a space of like, hey, we're on the same page, not just at home with nothing around, but like in our lives together. Does that make sense? So it's like, you ask me that question in my DMs, I'm like, yo, we got to have like a long conversation. But even better, it would be better to do it in person so I could actually see the dog and like feel the energies and be there. To, like it's a much different situation to try to help somebody. You know, you, you, you could give somebody some guidance and advice via the internet, like sweet, but there's nothing better. That's why I say like hire a professional that knows what they're doing because this is going to be the most optimal way to get down to the bottom of your pain point. So reprogramming the brain dude reprogramming the brain creating a new pattern and a new habit it's to the point now um and i'll cut to a video where he, instead of launching because i showed you the video of him launching um it's to the point now where he's just observing now with that said there's a difference between fixating and loading versus a dog just like looking at something I don't mind a dog looking. I, matter of fact, at this point, I'm happy for him to look. Look at it. But if I sense that you're starting to load, if I sense that you're starting to fixate, we're going to go ahead and want to break that fixation and give the dog something else to do. Because we know what's coming after that, right? So it's just important, again, in person, you're going to be able to like help somebody with this. Because you're there. You could see the dog. You could read the dog. If you're not there for it, it's absolutely impossible to help with the timing of it because timing is a very critical component of helping a reactive dog. If your timing is off and you're not able to read your dog correctly, then you're probably going to have an outburst. And that type of thing really infects an owner and it makes them really discouraged and it makes them frustrated and it makes them fearful and all these things. So, yeah. Um, 
we've uh, we've gotten to the point now where he's just observing other dogs, which is great because that's the ultimate goal. Just observe. Leave it. Yes, good choice, dude. Just observe and see how the dog is feeling and you kind of go from there. So if you're not willing to change the way you think about things, if you're not willing to change, that's why it's like when dogs come here, they improve. Why do they improve and they're not improving at home? It's a simple answer. It's because we're doing things differently here. We're, the whole structure is different. The expectation is different. The rules, boundary, structure, routine, it's all different. And it's all in, in an effort to come back to a balance. Because a lot of the time when dogs are acting out and lashing out, there's never been, there's never really been like a curriculum. There's never been like sufficient communication. And this is where the breach comes. This is where the problem comes. And it's my job to teach my people how to communicate better, when to do it, why to do it, the levels to do it. All of that nuance is in there. And that's why it's like much preferred to like go see a professional in real life when you're dealing with this type of a pain point because it's just not feasible to explain it perfectly or to get the optimal results doing it over the internet. Does that make sense? Awesome. So anyway, that's all I really got. I just wanted to make another video to stay consistent on my YouTube channel. I've been working really hard at it. So if you wanna do me a favor, if you've got anything valuable out of this video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you wanna see anything specific in the comments and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys, peace.